Welcome back to the Fusion 360 for 3D printing. Today we are going to check out how to do both the gears and bolts and threads. If you have a really dialed in 3D printer you can usually just make a thread as, as usual but usually you have a little bit of slack in your printer and you have some PLA that's melting and you have overhangs and everything so it's a good way to compensate for this. So I'm going to show you a few ways you can do threads but also how to do gears really simply in both uh, Fusion 360 and using external plugins to get it into Fusion 360. Now with that said, I'm gonna just head in the computer and I'll see you there. Okay, so let's just start off with Fusion 360. Let's make the easiest type of threads first and then we'll get into the more complicated ones later because this one might be enough for most of you and you probably already know it. You'll create a sketch, maybe you want to have a... you could just create a cylinder but I like to do um, these kind of types and then you extrude it and then you have here on tools in create you have of course already a thread which is i mean super awesome and this one here the important part is to set that it's modeled because that will give you the geometry that you can actually 3d print otherwise it's just a designer so to save on performance if you're designing big things um, what you could do is of course just create a lot of different components and then you'll go into the separate components to 3d print them and create model but if you want to assemble your whole model it's a good thing to not take the model frame here so i'm gonna go ahead with model sometimes the just regular ANSI metric and profile works great because then you can change the uh, the size here of the screws a little bit. Usually bigger is better when it comes to 3D printing because you're not going to get all the small details and when you do it's just going to be a bit mess to get them to fit together later. So I think that keeping it big is usually pretty good. Then of course you can change which ways they rotate left or right if you want to do some weird applications. But that's basically it. That's how we do it small. And so let's just make a new cylinder that is uh, 50 and a little bit bigger. Let's say 100, make this like a, like a nut or something. And if we go into create again, we'll do the thread. We're in the same place um, and just making the thread again. Now, if we look at those together and we'll just inspect this from a, um, a section analyst, uh, we can see that we're getting, we're getting a good margin of, of uh, margin here. Um, so we have a little bit of space, but usually this isn't enough. So what you can do is, of course, to uh, basically just click on one of these surfaces. And you can actually push this one. So if you need to have a little bit less margin over here, or you want to have, let's say you want to push, uh, I'm just going to remove that, push this part in a little bit, you can do that. Now, you can also push on these ones here to create a little bit extra margin. Maybe that's good for, for like the underlying side. So maybe, so maybe this side here, which is uh, the one that we overhang, you might want to push that in a little bit. You can also push this one in here. So you select both of them and then we're pushing everything in a little bit. That, that helps with, with the margins. So when you're printing this one, it's a little bit easier for this one to fall down. You can do the same with this one here. So we can press it in a little bit. Now, of course, you're gonna uh, wanna try this out depending on your product. So in, in, before you print all the big parts, you wanna print this and just check that they work for the, your scenario. But this is how you can fine tune the threads a little bit and you can just work out all the out of standard threads and just fine tune it a little bit. So that's boring, everyone can do that. It's super simple. If that's all you need, you can stop the video now, but you should probably look a little bit further. Now, what is interesting in really, really weird situations? I mean, we're talking super strange situation. All right, so let's go ahead and make the fun stuff. Now, we're gonna start off with making a shape that we wanna go ahead and like create. So um, I'm gonna start off with the profile, and this is the special case because you can do kind of everything here. So I'm gonna do some, let's say a super unique shape that is, is mega good for 3D printed um, threads. This one here, I have absolutely no idea if this actually is good, but I think it's gonna be fun to try it. So this will be our profile that will then um, coil up like a thread. Speaking of coils, that is actually the next thing to do. So um, to get some control out of this, we wanna uh, create a coil. Uh, ooh, we actually wanna stop the sketch first, that helps. Let me create a coil on this plane and we can get the diameter let's say I don't know maybe we want to do like um, 40 millimeters 
it's gonna be good now we get some cool tools here now originally this is set to like circular and on the center here so you can see how the line here creates a cylinder and they coils it all the way off now we want to change this to let's say a square uh, external um, and then you want a section position on the uh, sorry on the inside this means that we will get, get a, sh a corner here that we can then use and of course what's fun here is that you get a lot of control here you can set for example height and pitch so let's say we want to have it um, 90 millimeters tall not 920 we want to have a pitch of 8 millimeters maybe that's a little bit little let's say 12 in this case diameter we can change that again of course and you can just do a lot of fun stuff here for example which is super weird but you can do a taper on this one or an angle now i don't really know when you might need this but the tools are here and i think that's the important part to realize that you have a little bit more control here but in my case zero degrees so there we have it we now have a tool path now what's important to do here is that we'll go back to sketch we'll um, go down to project include include 3d geometry that means that we can actually, well, we just have to select a plane to work from. It doesn't matter which plane, just select the plane. Now, we want to select the outer line here, because that will create a line that we can work from. But we also need to select the inner line. And this is due to some bug in the uh, sweep tool. So we need to use a guide rail later on. So I'm just going to select two of them. I'm going to stop the sketch, go back, hide this model so we don't have to see it. And then we can go back to create sweep. We're going to go here to path plus guide rail. The, this is our profile. On the path, we're going to have the outer one. On our guide rail, we're going to have the inner one. And then the computer will think a little bit. And there we go. We now have our custom super mega profile. Now, as you can see, the measurements are still a bit off. So if you need to fine tune this, we need to move our profile sketch into the path here just to make sure that we have everything in order now i think this is a pretty cool shape i don't know if it's feasible but maybe this is easier to 3d print i have no idea at all and in this case i'm not planning to figure it out but it's up to you to do what you want to do here and you'll have full control on what you're going to do so that's the second way of making threads and i think that well you can of course just use the coil tool like we just did and create like a super simple cylinder or stuff like that. So I'm just going to show you that quickly as well. So if we create a cylinder like this, let's say 47 millimeters, that's probably going to be good. Now we have a cylinder. Let's say we want to have not the regular threads. We don't want to make super custom threads. We just want to make some sort of thread looking type of model. I don't know. Uh, you can select the to uh, coil tool again. And of course, we now get uh, the options to uh, play around here a little bit. So let's go ahead and change the diameter a little bit. Ooh, maybe something like that. I don't know. You can create a lot of different custom shapes here for different applications. And I wouldn't say that they are. It's not a thread unless you kind of model it like a thread. But I think that's up to, up to you, really. But you can create some cool stuff here, get some cool shapes out of it. That's probably going to be a little bit difficult to 3D print. I don't know. But that, that's the third way of making threads. So I'm gonna, we're going to leave that now and we'll check out how to make gears. Now, a lot of you might not know that there's a built-in gear tool in um, Fusion 360. So you'll find that up here in this corner called add-ins. And you'll have the scripts and add-ins down here you can check all uh, check out these cool examples here there's pretty many, many of them but one of the ones is a spur gear so i'm not going to teach you about gears because i don't know about gears <laughs> um so what you can just i mean again this is up to you what kind of control you want to have but you can create a gear here let's say a, a, a 20 degree pressure angle we want to have uh, 16 teeth uh, I don't care about backlash, I don't care about thickness because we can change that. Uh, however, I do care about the diameter. I think it's a little bit too much with um, which, with uh, the pitch. It was a little bit too much. Let's say something like that. Ta-da! We have a gear. We even have some lines to represent where the contact of gears are. <laughs> I think this is the pressure diameter. I think that's what it's called. Oh, I hope I'm not mistaken. Anyway, so you have control here with the sketch. 
we can create new bodies, we can create components and start to just make this super simple. Of course, you can treat this as anything. So if you want to create some holes here in this gear, we can do a pattern. Let's do a circular pattern of this one around that point. Yeah, let's go with three. We've now made our super cool, mega cool gear. <laughs> And to be honest, this is the way I do it when I need it for like uh, the the, uh, the camera projects and stuff like that. So that's how you make a gear with the built-in tool. And of course, it's up to you to make a gear ratios and everything. There's great calculators for that. Speaking of that, we have this tool here. This is pretty cool. This is a GearGenerator.com. Super simple. You can probably remember that URL. But if not, check out the link down below. In here, you can animate gears, because that's pretty cool. Um, but you can also create different gears here. And what's really cool is that you can export them as a DXF or a SVG. And I think that they say right now that DXF is in, in beta, but I think it works pretty good usually. But of course, you can take it in, in an SVG as well. So you have a little bit more control here. You can, let's say we want to have 56 gears, because we're going to be badass. You can change the pitch and everything here to uh, to different types, and I'm I'm not gonna like. This is totally up to you how you want to do this. Some do it differently. It's, yeah, it's it's totally controllable. Now I'm gonna download a SVG. I I, I uh, free this time, but next time I promise. Next time, next time. So download that. I'm gonna download it. Let's jump into Fusion again. Click on Insert. Insert SVG. Bada boom, bada bing, isn't that what they said? Which plane? This plane. Ka ching We have the file. And it is a pretty heavy file. Hopefully it's divided into the different layers here, because otherwise we need to do some cleanup. But again, that's totally okay. It's free, it's good. So we do need to some, do some cleanup here. There we go, now we have a shape. This is super heavy, so uh, maybe there are some tools and optimizations to be done. But we can, of course, if we want to extrude this into a thickness. Now it's going to be a little bit heavier on your, your, on, on your computer. So if you can do, use the built-in tool. And if not, this is a great way to import the kind of files that you might need to do. That's how you do gears. I show you two ways and we're already done. This was hopefully a short video when I'm editing everything out. Because you don't want to see all the bloopers. And there you have a few ways of doing different types of threads with more and less control and of course two ways of doing gears and also a way of crashing the computer. Now another problem that I've uh, encountered is that sometimes you want to have 90 degree gears and there is actually no good tool of doing that in Fusion 360 right now but hopefully we can all vote for that and have that added on later. There are some great examples on for example um, Thingiverse, there's uh, 90 degree gears that you can use there and import and remodel or just use as STL files. So there are already a bunch of different um, source files that you can use. So with that said, I want to thank you so much for watching. You can check out some links down below and I'll see you in the next video because that video is going to be awesome because I'm going to use some gears and some threads. So uh, make sure you check that out. Stay subbed and I'll see you in the next video.